is not the only way to get there. Now a new study has revealed that a majority of Americans need to be certain they'll make it to heaven. And African Americans are more certain than any other racial group that they will be with God in heaven in the afterlife. These false teachers of old on Clubhouse, they are increasing this lie in black people. You are, le they, you are being led to your destruction listening to them false uh, teachers on Clubhouse. You see, you see, go back a little bit. You see how that phone changed from that rotary where you just got to dial it up, right? Now, it's, it, now you see, you can see what you are dialing up or speak to people. Let's see what happened. Let it play. Pause it. Now you got GPS. You got the iPod music on, the, on those things, right? Keep playing. Yeah, we got that. Integration. Pause. Now, your cell phone has become a computer. They work. That's they working on that paper and di digital paper. That's they working on that paper and di digital paper. What happens next? Destruction. That's what's coming next. The structure is coming next. For the prophets, I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto okay, you, till it. heaven and earth. That's all I wanted. So read it again, Liam. This is how they got the image to speak. Go ahead. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. So the life they gave is the life of Christ. Go ahead. That the image of the beast should both speak. That's how it speaks in their movies, their media. And cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Uh-huh. Should be killed. Go ahead. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. Now that always confuses, brothers. What is that mark? What is that mark? Revelation 5, 17. What is it, brothers? Sin. Sin. Very good. Revelation 5, 17. What is it, brothers? Sin. Sin. Very good. Or in their foreheads. Now that always confuses, brothers. Or in their foreheads. Now that always confuses, brothers. Revelation 5, 17. What is it, brothers? Sin. Sin. Very good. They now have a means to connect with people faster to deceive those many. To the, uh, read on. He said unto him, what is written in the law? What is what? What is written in the law? Christ didn't ask him, what's your level of faith? Oh, Christ didn't ask him, what's your level of faith? How readest thou? How readest thou? What you read in the law concerning eternal life? Now look at the answer that he replied back. Let's read. And he answering said, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. And with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. So in order to learn to know how to do that in the uh, last days, when evil is prevalent, you have to go back to the law to understand how to love God. All the praises and the honor goes to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem, Rechaha Kodash, and double honors to the elder apostles and even the elder bishops of Great Millstone. Honors as well to you brethren, you fellow believers of this faith, even you few sisters, and shalom to the elect. I want to touch on this video here with the IUIC um, dealing with the law, commandments, and faith. 
or all three of them together. And there's a lot of IUIC followers who have left me comments saying, you guys don't believe in the law. We absolutely do believe in the law. So there's a cross between what IUIC teaches, what the Christian Terps teach, and what Great Millstone teach, right? And what IUIC teaches all about the law. All you got to do is follow the commandments, right? And what the Christian church teach is the commandments and laws are done away with. You just have faith. So you have a, a split between the law and faith. And what we teach is it's both, right? But they teach it's supposed to be faith too. But the first commandment says, love the Lord with all your heart, your might, and your strength. Why are you calling on Jesus the Christ? It's a question I have. And if he's going to give us a new name, do we then... Do we then abandon or omit the old name? I don't think so. If you are all about the law, you got to remember the law is not exactly what's going to fully save you because there's men who put on the garments, right, who had the fringes in the ancient times and were still wicked. Did you see what Yahweh had to do when he went up in the synagogues, right? <clears throat> what about the woman that came with the the small amount of money. So these men was high, high head, high strong in the, in the law. And this is why I'm going to get into the letters of Paul to kind of bring that home. And then we also going to get into faith, which one scripture came to my mind, right? When it comes to that one, one major scripture has come to my mind, proven that at the end you're going to be saved through faith and that's why the most high sent his son it's the laws of the most high right it's, the, it's not the law of Moses it's the laws of the most high <clears throat> and the laws used men today the Lord has used men today to enforce or bring that law back to us to bring us closer to him but at the end it's still going to be required by faith right that's what it's going to boil down to and then we'll go into this mark as they say it's the mark of sin okay and there's no repenting from this mark in Revelation 13 but let's go to Romans 13 and I mean it's like here, Romans 3 and 21 this is titled justified by faith it says now uh, but now the righteousness of Yahweh without the law is manifested through the witnessed being witnessed by the law and the prophets even the righteousness of Yahweh of God with which is by faith of Jesus, Yahweh unto all and upon all them that believe. So that's that's the key. Okay, so you're going to have, uh, in order to believe, you're going to have to have faith. You got people who don't technically fully believe, you're going to find out. This is why that mark is so important because you're going to have Jake with garments on and you're going to be tested in their last days. Right, it's not so much about your garments. That's just that's just showing something to show we reference the Lord. But it's about your soul. Remember, he said it is the spirit. It is not about the flesh. It's not about the other matters. It's about the faith. Right, being justified freely by the grace through the redemption that Yahweh in that is in Yahweh Shah, uh, whom Yahweh have set forth to be a propitiation. Through faith in his blood, meaning bringing us back. That's John 3.16, by the way. When you go into Kamidzo. Okay. Um, we're going to go to the point. Where is boasting then? Is it excluded by what law? Or works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Because you had Pharisees who was a bolsters of the law. This is the problem they had with Yahweh when he came on the scene. And said, this man is a devil. He's a warlock because of the things he's doing and on the Sabbath, which Yahweh set his son to do that on purpose because these jakes was wicked as hell in the law. Okay? He say, uh, <clears throat> by what law? Of works? Nay, but by, the, but by the law of faith. Therefore, we include that a man is not, uh, a man is justified by faith <clears throat> without the deeds of the law. Right, because there's going to be some of these laws that you can't keep, 100 percent. There's a whole lot more laws that these guys can be keeping, or they can pretend to keep, but they can't and they won't. Right, 
And one of the main things that I see is the first commandment, and these guys are not loving the Lord with all their heart and strength, or they wouldn't say you can call the Most High and your son whatever you want. That's faithless, right? Um, is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also, meaning Israelites. Seeing as one God which shall justify the circumcision, one power, which shall justify the circumcision by faith and uncircumcision through faith. <clears throat> so this key in, in the word faith, right, which goes into Yahawasha, you know, when we read the scriptures, um, even Matthew 13 and 9 and 10 and 11 says that he's given it to his elect, don't know the mysteries, but to the rest it is not given, right? All things were created through him, by him, right? Um, through faith, you know, through the spirit. And we have to believe that. You know, that's the key. Do we then make void the law through faith? Yahweh forbid, yea, we establish the law. So no, we're not saying to throw out the law. But we must have the faith. Because when this thing go down, there has to be some form of tribulation to test your faith to see who is his, is his chosen. All right? So this is crazy that this man, that these men think this way. Now Matthew 24 and 11 Said many false prophets shall arise and, and deceive many. These jakes don't even believe that they they may be the very false prophets that's doing that. You know, so we can go more and more in the letters of Paul, but I'm not going to uh, not so much going to go into that. But I I just wanted to touch on the fact that uh, I you remember the stories. You can read all the stories of the Bible through all the the commandments and everything and the Lord told told the men to keep it and some didn't but you also had the pool of, pool of Bethesda when the Lord was healing and and they didn't even come help their own brother right and they got mad at the other story in John 9 where the Lord healed the blind man and they were saying well, it's the Sabbath day you're not supposed to work <clears throat> you know why that was going on because Jake was making tyranny in the law <clears throat> right Jake was being a tyrant in the law and then when you have all these priests and these men are set up, they're, they're putting extras on the law and, and making it beneficial and they, to them, and they're making merchandise in the law as well. So there was a lot of corruption in the law and the things that we were doing in the law. So this is why it's so much in, more important through faith. Let's get Revelation 2 and 10 real quick. This is the scripture I thought of. Revelation 2 and 10, it says, Fear none of these things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prisons. Right? The ones who's keeping the law. They say, all you got to do is keep the law. Right? That ye may be tried, and ye may have tribulation ten days. So this is crazy how these, these jakes, it doesn't seem like they're teaching this. They may say it, or they may put a spin on it. I don't know. <clears throat> but... In order to have that tribulation, I wonder how many Jakes gonna have that had kept the laws, right? Had fringes on up in there in, in prison with their fringes. You don't think some gonna sell out? You don't think some in the end is gonna fall out? Some in the end is gonna rise. Right? So the, the way these smooth teaching Israelites teach is all you got to do is follow the laws and commandments and you'll be safe. Well, the bigger part of this is faith. You shall have tribulation 10 days. Be thou faithful unto death. That's what it says. Be thou faithful unto death. You ever had somebody, and let's say you hired somebody to do a job, right? And they may say they clean your house and they do kind of a bang up job. They clean your house. Make sure your house is clean or whatever. But then there's something extra that they can do, but they won't do. They're just going to do the bare minimum, you know, or enough to, to make you happy. But when the compromise come, will they fight for you in the end? If somebody come and offer them more pay to go work somewhere else and to make more money, will they stay with you? Or will and and help build your business so they can get a crown, or will they leave? And this is the same type of example. When this thing goes down, and they start offering this chip 
and so forth, which we'll get into next, what are you going to do? All right? And this is all what all this is about. And not pushing the tribulation. And they're, te they're also teaching that don't worry. You know, you're, uh, all the black people believe that they're going in a African, so-called African Americans. They all believe that they're going to the pearly gates. And they're laughing about it like it's false. The Lord has chosen an elect. It's almost like these guys are fighting against the elect. Almost like they, they're they teaching that if you're a two-third, right, you better be of the elect or you're going to get destroyed. It's kind of like they're teaching that. We teach it too, but to the degree we understand that two-thirds are not going to get it. It's not meant for them to get it, you know? Your aunt is not may not get it. Your brother, your sisters, your daughters, your sons and daughters, they might not get it. But what is the hope that we have? This is why Yahweh Shah said, let the dead bury the dead. Don't worry about them. This is why we don't have these matching colors getting up, making these big marches down the hoods to try to wake up a bunch of black people. Not the Israelites to look white and Chinese and like other nations, but just all black and Hispanic looking people. Right? So this scripture really hit home. Be thy faithful unto death and I will give thee a crown of life. It doesn't say keep your fringes until death. Right? It doesn't say keep the Sabbath unto death. Now you're supposed to, but you know what I mean. When this thing really wrap up, you done kept the Sabbath, you kept the holy days, you did all these things. Right? Let's go to Romans 11. Romans 11, 26. And so all Israel shall be saved as it is written. As it is written. There shall come out of Zion a deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. Right? Eventually all Jacob. Because the two-thirds that die on this side, the ungodliness is going to be turned away. This is why when we read Hebrews 8, and these guys believe in the new, we're in the new covenant as well. When you read Hebrews 8, which is a cut that we're not in the new covenant, the Lord said he, uh, in the house of Jacob, the house of Jacob means all. He's going to put his laws in our minds and our hearts. The whole house of Jacob. So even the, the, what we're fighting on, fighting for is to be of the elect, see our enemies go down, be the first ones to start establishing the kingdom. But our other, your, your mother or whoever doesn't make it, if they, they're not delivered or lifted up under you, guess what? They're going to all come through your loins and they're going to come back and be happy anyway. Romans eleven twenty six, And so all Israel shall be saved. As it is written, there shall come out, out of Zion the deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob, right? So I want to go here to, which proves it's about all Israel. So I also want to go here about this mark of sin. Uh, I wanted to make this a little quicker. The mark of sin, right? Revelation 13. Here we're going to look at this Bible of the 1382, and we're going to go into Revelation 13 and 15. It says, and it was Hewn to him that he should have the spirit of the image of the beast, all right, and that this is all old English, and he and he shall make that whoever honoreth not the image of the beast be slain. So these guys are looking at is the pictures of Jesus. We know America comes out of the Roman Empire. These these the NWO is nothing new. They're just trying to. This is why I said they will build. Um, they shall be, uh, was in Malachi, right? They shall return and build the desolate places. They shall build, but I will throw it down. When you go to 16, it says, and he shall make all small and greet. It says greet. Rich and poor, free men and bondmen to receive, to have a character in their writ hand and either it, her four hitties that no man might buy. So we go to the word character. This is why you have to go into the words you can't associate this word mock with it's like Ezekiel 9 or uh, Romans 13 or Romans 16, mock them that cause division, or even the book of Mark. You have to go into the words, right? And maybe this is of that 501c3 that they honor. Anyway, this word character, the original way of spelling it without the H, it says symbol marked or branded on the body, symbol of drawing used in sorcery, right? A symbol which they was doing this in the ancient times to a degree right a symbol a sound like symbol 
but this time it's going to be with the technology and that's why it's sickening to see them talk about all this technology and then after the technology the destruction come on man after and they said after the paper currency then the destruction but why aren't you cheating this prophecy of the MOTB the C-H-Y-P-E you know I'm spelling it like that Greek character which comes from Karax engraved mark imprint on the soul properly instrumented marking Karasin to engrave from Karax a pointed stake right to the point to the point so I just wanted to touch on this video and go into the hypocrisy of these guys it's like they using a little bit of Christianity and then they're condemning Christianity but most of the thing they teach is from Christianity um, they do still teach the hell doctrine but they don't believe the underground hell part but they do believe there'll be a fire here burning and your souls will be basically here burning forever in torment so they've managed to take a little bit from Christianity to the one wife doctrine which is not in the Bible right the husband of one wife I did a video on that um the uh, the hell doctrine they teach that uh, various other doctrines that you could call on Jesus the Christ they teach that and the only thing they separate is the commandments and that's how they tweak and get them to say hey follow the commandments wear your purple and your fringes and then this man he's, he's a millionaire right and this millionaire Bishop Nathaniel and they might say we're jealous I'm not the Lord says give you Give us, Lord, our daily bread, not the whole loaf. But even these millionaires, they have to, if you Google it, they'll have to tell you um, their, it, it'll, it'll state their, finan their financial background, right, or what they're worth, their net worth. Nobody's supposed to have their net worth plastered all over the Internet. And then they'll say, we're just jealous. Ah, you know, we're not jealous. We're, we're, we're angry at the doctrine that you're spewing and we have to fight in defense for the doctrine anyway they say uh, Paul said contend for the faith and that means to fight for the faith and that's what we do not just against Christians but you other Israelites that's all I have on that show